Now, a few years ago, I had an opportunity to buy this little 1970 Dodge Challenger RT 440 automatic on the column car. Nothing to really write home about, except that it is plum crazy, and it was a California car. A very nice, solid, original California car. I had bought that car for Graveyard Motors, my used car lot I want to put together someday. Now, Tony and Cindy had come out just a couple of years after I got that car to visit. He looked at the car, fell in love with it, showed it to Cindy, she fell in love with it. Next thing you know, we're putting a deal together for us to restore that car for Cindy. Pull it back. <laughs> Gundar! Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Buried deep in the Pacific Northwest, one team in Springfield, Oregon, takes on the impossible, finding dead Mopar muscle and bringing it back from the grave. Award-winning master of Mopar, Mark Warman, his cousin, Doug, his daughter, Alyssa, his best friend, Royal, his painter, Will, and the rest of the GYC ghouls are restoring, resurrecting, and recreating some of the fastest, fiercest, and rarest muscle cars on the planet. This is Graveyard Cars. How you doing, big guy? Good, good, good to, to see you, man. Mark. Yeah, hey, good buddy. to see you. Well, this is my wife, who is Cindy. Yeah, we do hug. Hi, Cindy. Hi, John. It's nice to meet you <laughs> nice face to, meet to face. You too. Me too. Fine. Very beautiful today. Thank you, so do you. Yeah, yeah. You know, the generosity beautiful. of women never ceases to amaze me. You know, Cindy D'Agostino is one of the sweetest people. Uh, she has always supported graveyard cars, me. She's always pulling for us, always saying something nice online. I mean, she's truly that salt of the earth kind of person that is just, you're a better person for knowing her. But she also, the generosity of women never ceases to amaze me. Why is she with Tony? Why is she with that 17 sandwich eating, automatically correcting everybody in the room when they make a mistake? 3049, and the other one in the back was 3039. Oh, it's 3039 on the, on on the, the other car. And V5X. And what did v I say, V3, I'm V3. sorry. V3 yeah. is convertible top, I don't know what I'm Oh, uh, okay, okay. Okay, so I'm tired. You. Except, as you'll notice in this episode, he doesn't correct her. Yeah. What's the monochromatic rubber bumper code? I forget, 822? 822, yes sir. I really do enjoy when Tony comes out because he's really knowledgeable. Now I bust his chops, he busts mine, and we always try to one-up each other. You got the red bubble. Would you if you'd have had a shaker? Yes. But I'll tell you what, he is super knowledgeable. We have a lot of fun together. Normally he's pretty hard to take, but when Cindy's around, he's like a saint. He is a different guy around Cindy. So Cindy is welcome out anytime Tony wants to come out. I call it the, the bro talk a little bit back and forth, but in the end, they're pretty much both right. So it's, like I said, they're I'm both- I'm right more than Marcus. Uh, most of the time. Not all, but most. I'll give you credit most. When they were back there talking about the Roadrunner, I, I was going off looking at the Challenger. I was really curious to see what Cindy's reaction to the car was. Well, we lost this, uh, you, didn't yeah, we? You're like, like my employee, you see something shiny. Yeah. I paid attention to if she was just there to have fun or entertain or keep Tony in line, or if she really did have an interest in cars. One thing I know to attract her to this. And in this particular car, she showed a great deal of interest. Purple. Right. Purple. 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 <laughs> it's purple. purple. I would love to have a car like that. I think anybody would like to have a car that is complete. It catches their eye, it's their color, it's their whatever, you're drawn to that vehicle. One of the exciting things about this, it's for Tony's wife, not Tony. So being able to build a car, specifically what she wants, is awesome to make her dreams come true. I'm not nervous about the execution of the build, painting it, anything like that, because I've done that for over half my life. Where it is a little nerve wracking is I'm building a car for the number one Mopar person in America. There's not even a close second to Tony. He is the most knowledgeable, informative. He is the lead. He just a pat on the back. Uh, automatic yes, on the right. column, no six-way seat, striped whoa, elite car. Whoa, whoa. I think it has a six-way seat. This one does? I didn't check. What's the what's the alphanumeric code for it? C. I don't know. Fifty-six or something like that. How did you know that by looking through the windshield? You're. You can see the two knobs. 
Wow. He's the devil. Yeah. How could you see that's a six-way seat through the windshield? I bought the car and I don't even remember. I, I can see right away that it's not rusty like the other cars. No, I, it, honest, Tony, this is a nice. This is a really nice car. I completely understand why Tony would want to do this car for Cindy. This is the right car to do. Okay, it's a 440 Magnum automatic, not a super high dollar car, but it's a California car. It's solid, no rust. That matters. We say California car because typically the weather is much better there than it is anywhere else. When it comes to rain, when it comes to snow, when it comes to salting the roads, none of that exists down there. So when somebody says, hey, this is a genuine, original little old lady from Pasadena song there, is because they're talking about a car that just hasn't been exposed to the environment like most cars have. This would be the perfect car for Cindy. It's at least a 70. And, and this is an early car, I believe? What's the... How would you know that? Quite a VIN number. It looked like it was an early VIN. You're, you're the devil. We see a lot of cars in all kinds of conditions at Graveyard Cars. This place is full of them, right? Most of them have a lot of metal work ahead of them in their future. Also, they've been picked apart, so a lot of the key pieces are missing. We can find them, but that and the metal replacement and putting a car back together that's dead, that all adds up to time and money. This car can go much faster through the shop because it's complete and because it won't spend six months in the metal shop. So you say build it. Yeah. That is number no, that... No body panel replacement. I mean, that saves a bunch there. Again, you know, Tony coming at me trying to grind prices and stuff, saying, oh, well, you know, this is going to be really easy because of that. Don't, don't play the game with me, man. It's a no excuses car. Right. It just isn't a super car. It isn't a Hemi and it no, isn't a six pack. It's, it's, it's a pretty dad gum nice one. This is funny. They're all from the East Coast, right? So back there, they think they're the greatest car dealers, the greatest wheeler dealers. They know how to make a deal. That there is not worth this. And they grind people down. But you coming out and you play in the Trey's backyard, man, right? I'm a willer diller. This is what I do. <laughs> there, you know, now you, this is your calling, the used car guy. You ain't gonna put me together like a cheap watch. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I was missing when I bought that Challenger was a gun and a mask. <laughs> Stole it. I know what I'm doing. I got my stuff. I'm playing my stuff out. You know what I'm saying? Stamp the back and deposit it. That's money in the bank. <laughs> so after Tony inspected the car, we did put a deal together. I know it's gonna be a big surprise to Cindy. Dream maker. The most important thing is we're gonna be able to make a dream come true for Cindy. Like the song, right? Fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you when you're Young at heart, fairy tale coming true from the tray. That was Frank Sinatra 1953, in case anybody's wondering. So I'm not just stuck in the 70s. Tony's coming in. Tony's here. Tony, what? So excited to see Tony. Why didn't you tell me it was coming? Yeah. How you doing, man? Good, good. I'm sorry, brother. I, well, nobody tells me anything. You said you were That's working awesome. on the car and oh, car. I've, my Challenger, Cindy's Challenger? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know how Mark is. I know that he's told Tony, man, your car, it's, it's done. We're wrapped up. We're, we're so far ahead. We're, we've moved on. Now, why would I tell somebody that their car's been started when it obviously hasn't been started? Come on, man, I got a little more common sense than that. Well, that's great. Yeah, what, can how, we go? Uh, so when did you, when did you fly, what? Uh, I'm here for a couple days. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I told him that it had been started, yeah. So go out into the yard in the second row in, there's a 70 Challenger, the purple one, the one I sold Tony. So Mark comes in, tells me to drop what I'm doing, go out and get Tony's car disassembled, make it look like it's been apart for a while. How do I do that? When Tony shows up and his car isn't where it's supposed to be in the process, he tries to pull me in like I was part of it. And I would never do that to Tony. Tony calls me, where's my car? No, this is all Mark, not me. That's above my pay grade. BS23 JOB. Right? AAR. AAR. Axle package 391 car. Right. All right, so we know it has power disc brakes in the front of it. All AARs. All do. AARs do, right. All it means I had to do a little bit of stalling, right? Give Tony a little bit of a run around. That's good, he needs the exercise anyway. You've seen him. Mark! Mark! Camera guy, you got a key, right? Somebody's gotta be able to let you in here. Not gonna hurt him to go from door to door and burn a couple of calories. 
should be thanking me for stalling. So I was just told to keep Tony out of the shop. So you were an accomplice? Well, no, no. I, I follow orders. I mean, Mark's always saying, men follow orders or people die. You know, that's a quote from A Few Good Men, right? <laughs> oh. Get the door. I don't know why everybody's coming at me for, for telling some kind of little white lie, little baby, you know, famous quote. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Frederick Nietzsche. He was actually quoted in The Stand. What rough beast's hour doth come around slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. Actually, that was Yeats. That was Yeats? It doesn't matter. The beast is loose in the streets. That's the message. The thing is, I got a lot of stuff on my plate in the course of a day. I got a lot of juggling to do. I'm running from one spot to another, doing my best to keep everything in the air, all right? As an onlooker, I got to be that duck going across the water, right? My head's nice and calm, but my little feet's is doing this. When you see me around there, you never see me sweat. You always see me stand up and take care of my stuff. It was really nice working on this car. This car was in such good condition that it was just a pleasure taking this car apart. I didn't have to sift through a lot of rust or dirt or filth or anything like we normally do, but I wish I had more than an hour to take this thing apart. You know, once the guys got the car taken apart to where I said it was weeks ago, I let Tony find me and we went out and looked at the car together as friends. This was just taken apart. Look at the, look at this. I think he's starting to suspect something. Tony. What lies beneath? 2000, Harrison Ford, Michelle Pfeiffer, Bobby Z, the director. Oh no, this I see what you're saying. No, the car's been here. You know, this isn't my first rodeo. I've been in this situation before, right? They start coming all at you with, oh, you said this and you said that, you know, confuse them. Do you know what gravity is? Like the bumblebee that confounds the wise. Yeah. Okay, you know water seeks its own level? That's 24 hours. I can show you a pie chart where throw a little science at it, a little physics. You know what reverse polarity is, right? Yes. Next thing you know, it's too exhausting for him to engage. I know what BS is too. In a previous season of Graveyard Cars, we restored this beautiful 1972 Dodge Charger Rally, FY1 Top Banana. True or false, this car was optioned with a 383 Magnum. If you think you remember, stay tuned after the break. I'll let you know how you did. All right, folks, welcome back. How'd you do on this one? True or false, our 1972 Dodge Charger Rally came from the factory with a 383 Magnum. If you answered true, you did not see the episode. As a matter of fact, this is a very unusual car. The gentleman ordered it special. This car was a 318. All of the rally options and features, except it had a 318 two barrel in it. He wanted to do some traveling, tour the country with the family. He was a regular Sparky Griswold. You know, Mark was right. This car came back from the Dipper, very clean car. We had some minor rust on the bottom of the quarter. The trunk floor needed to replace in a small patch on the driver's floor. Otherwise, outside of aligning the sheet metal, it was ready to go get the body work done. Tony came out a couple months later to check the progress on the car, and at that point, we had all the mud work completed. So when it comes to mud work, you know, that's such a, a rough thing to cover because people see Bondo and they think, oh, it's horrible, they're butchers, this and that. Even though Tony's car is very clean and straight, it still takes mud work to get it just perfectly straight. It's not thick, it's very minimal. You can see the bare metal coming through in some spots. It's just enough, everybody does it, Every TV show, every garage, everybody uses Bondo. We just don't use that much. Okay, so I'm not gonna cut and buff this car, right? Sure you are. Well, it's not factory. It's okay. Well, you I can't pick and choose. <laughs> yeah, I can. No, you can't. Factory didn't cut and buff these cars. You know, they had dirt. I've seen them with runs. I've seen them with orange peel. And that's just the way they were produced. Customers and clients nowadays, 
they want a mirror finish. You know, they want it cut, any imperfection, cut flat. They want that paint to shine as much as possible. And I get it, I would be the same way. But when it came to this car, Mr. OE calls it a Liberty. It went away from OE. You know, then that's when he wants it cut and buff. That's when he wants the paint flat. And then you find out Tony's just as big a sellout as Mark. Mark and Tony moving forward, just pick out whatever they want, their favorite colors, and who cares about that OE shot? We should change our name to like Graveyard Cars, not original. One thing that Tony did do to help our assembly process along well was that he has so many really nice, already reconditioned and or new old stock parts. So he sent us a completely restored eight and three quarter rear axle assembly, drum to drum. Sent us the K member with all the suspension and the steering on it, completely restored, correct, even with the markings on it. I mean, he sent us a lot of things that was really helpful towards putting this car together. Under the hood, there was a ton of NOS. Inside the car, a ton of NOS stuff. He did help this car move ahead by at least maybe a year to two years by the amount of parts that he provided for us. So when it came to the first primer, I let Meat Sweats do it. You can't really screw it up, it's the first primer. It's just the most critical thing at that point is pinholes and getting enough primer on there. So when we're done with that, we can block the car out and it should only need one more primer. I was really surprised how quickly that car moved through the shop. You know, getting it out and getting it dipped is one thing, but from the minute it came back, it moved quick. There was hardly any rust, so a couple of patches, then through to mud, then through to primer, and it's nice now to be at a point where old Magic Hat can mix him up some DBC 2210, it's the correct mix number for FC7 in 1970, and start laying out some base coat on Cindy D'Agostino's 1970 Dodge Challenger. Uh, when it comes to Tony's car, it was one of the last few cars that we did a pre-paint on. So at that point, you know, I didn't have to seal it. We finished it off in 320, put seven coats of the Plum Crazy on there, which is just one of my favorite colors until you do it too much. Then at that point, you can bolt the whole car together, block it all out with 400, wet sand the car with 600. I go around seven coats, that's five good coats, and then two drop coats. And then once that's all dry and ready for clear, I can go in there, mix up my DCU 2002 clear coat, apply three coats on that, and we're done. You know, once the pre-paint was done, one nice thing is Mark can come out and see what the car is gonna look like finished. Actually, it looks really good. So you're happy? That well, I hang it. on, I didn't say I was happy. He can look for any imperfections, a wave, because he has a great eye for detail. He walks around the car, car looks good, he gives me the go ahead to get the car final painted. You know, when it comes to making this TV show, we're blue collar guys. We just work, do our job, make people happy. Mark's went next level. While he wants to do all those things, he knows where that camera is, he loves the camera time, and he just likes to be a part of everything. Is it absolutely 100% supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? I'm gonna paint the car. That's it, that's the big one. So I'm not painting this car? You know what, I'll paint it 100 times if that's what it takes to make it perfect. While I was looking at the car, all I really saw that concerned me was there were some scratches in the paint finish. Then Mark says, well, I didn't paint it. Whoa, 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 what do you mean you didn't paint it? I didn't. So I love it when Mark gets caught, you know, lying, we'll call it. He tells Tony he painted the car. I don't know why he needs that credit. Will did this. Yeah. Wasn't you? Never said it was. You sent me a picture of you doing it. Yeah, I told him I did the pre-paint on it. <laughs> it's acting, all right? I don't remember any actors getting crucified for being actors. Although some of them should have. Warren Beatty. I'm talking Ishtar here, man. So once the car is pre-painted, at that point, we'll assemble the car. Get the whole car put together, block it out with 400, wet sand it with six. During that process, you're able to look for any imperfections, make sure your gaps, your seam seal work, all the little details are done. And the car's put together, it's all one color, it's super easy. So Mark can walk in and say, man, this looks good, hey, let's tweak this door. Any adjustments you can do. So when it comes to pinholes, you're gonna get them. There's no way around that. I'll just take a little metal glaze and a razor blade, just do a little glaze coat over each one, go back and sand it and you're good to go. 
Cindy's 440 block was really nice to start with. They bored it 30 over, put in all new pistons, bearings, everything. We put in a 270 comp cam. It's going to be a great engine. Okay, so after I get the camshaft in, the timing chain and gears on, then I'm going to put the timing cover on. After the timing cover's on, I'm going to put the windage tray in, the oil pan on, and then I'll put the heads on. These are special heat shields that I put on the exhaust to protect the spark plug boots and plug wires. Those will go on next. Once I get the heads torqued, I'm going to put the intake manifold on and then the valve covers. So once I have the engine all assembled, I ship it over to Will for paint. When it comes back, I do the final dress out, which is all the plug wires, hoses, belts, and the rest of the engine. So when it came to the undercoating on this car, this car was not coated for factory undercoating. So when one of these cars isn't coated for factory undercoating, it still gets some. It just doesn't get the whole car. It gets it in key areas like the wheelhouses where the rocks might fly up, the front inner fenders where the rocks might fly up, a couple of spots in the back. Making this look exactly like the factory did is a bit of a science. I have the original engineering plans, which we referred to. I also had the original photos of the car, which we referred to. Will did most of this on his own. So I shot in a single stage the whole underside of his car gray. At that point, when you go to do the purple, you don't mask it off at all. You let the purple just blow in like factory did. I didn't do it perfectly, so I had to blow it in a little bit, a couple more inches to make it perfect for him. So I use a shoots gun. It's a pretty common gun for this type of stuff. You can get it at your local paint supply store. It's like a $20 gun, nothing fancy. We use this particular product because Tony was happy with this one because it matched the closest. And it's basically mask it off, spray it, and then walk away, clean your gun out, and you're done. You know, one thing I have to admit when it was all done, it's cool because Mopar is so different. The reasoning for this and that, none of it makes sense, and that's what I appreciate about doing these. So you take a step back, you look, no undercoating here, undercoating here, purple blowing in on the gray here. The whole thing is one is just really a unique car. There was a lot involved when you're wanting to make a car look exactly like it did when it left the assembly line. What I don't understand is why a guy who changed the top color from black to white in the interior from buckets to a white bench seat and added a white stripe down the side of a car that was a black stripe car cares about the exact positioning of the undercoating. That's what I mean when I say he's lost his damn mind. So one of the things when we were finished with that engine, it was as close to a real time capsule as possible because of the key parts that Tony sent out. The new old stock, not just good parts and not aftermarket replica parts, but new old stock parts. Now on the front of the engine, we replaced the clutch fan and the fan itself with the ones that he makes. But all the rest of this stuff, the KV fuel lines, those were NOS. The distributor was a new old stock distributor. Upper and lower radiator hoses, new old stock. The carburetor was a correct date coded one that we had Scott Smith completely restore. The coil was a new old stock coil. The positive and negative battery cables, both new old stock. The clamps that held those KV hoses on, those autoker clamps, those were assembly line autoker clamps that you're looking at, not aftermarket reproductions. You'll see that there's actual lettering on those things. The power steering hose, new old stock. So when you look at this, when I say it was a time capsule, that's what I mean. It's almost like right before they put an engine into a car, in 1969, this one was built in December 69. It's like they stopped, grabbed the engine, and sent it over to graveyard cars. It's that cool. So since this car came apart so nicely, it went back together just about as easy. We have our drivetrain installed down to a science. First, we install the rear end to balance the car. Then we put in the engine and the transmission and the K-member in the front. Installing the drivetrain on this car is just like the rest of them. You lower the car down around the K-member, you get your four K-member bolts into place. Once they're in place, you can raise the car up. Put in the drive line. We put in our torsion bars and adjust our ride height. And then we can put on the wheels, the cables, etc. That really is just kind of a one, two, three basic step for us these days.
So once we had the suspension under the car and it was a roller, we were able to send it over to the upholstery shop where they put the white vinyl top, which isn't correct on the car. It's beautiful, just isn't correct. One thing I really like about this car is that Mr. OE decided not to be OE. What better with purple? You got a white top, you got white interior, you got a white stripe. It's a very well done, very sexy looking car. When that car rolled back into the assembly shop with the top on it, it was absolutely stunning. I mean, the Kreger wheels popped off of it, the white top popped, everything on that car was so stunningly beautiful. Everybody loved it. Even Alyssa, who was actually just walking by upstairs, saw it and just fell in love. Oh my gosh, that's Is that beautiful. beautiful. I love it. I think this is the car I want. What are you talking about? We yeah, just this went... is it. No, I love we... it. I knew it when I seen it. Absolutely love that car. I think Cindy will absolutely love that car. One of the things Tony opted to take liberty on, <laughs> a lot of liberties on that car, was adding the sound deadener, which I agree with completely because it's all hidden underneath the seat. So that second skin goes in, it really quiets down the right of the car. It was a good call. Justin always does a great job. There's a lot of pieces of it. When you're done, it looks really good. And it's gonna even sound better going down the road. You know, one of the things I really enjoyed developing a relationship with is the guys over at ECS. And it's not a plug, it's just people that are building cars need to know this. You can call them and you can order a carpet set for your car, right? But it's not all rolled up in a box. And I know I've talked about it in the past, but in case you missed it, this carpet comes in a big flat box. So making it fit and contour the floor is a piece of cake. It's a big time consumer. And you don't end up with that stretched wrinkly area that you can with the rolled up carpeting. The exhaust system they supplied is as close to new old stock as humanly possible. Just go back and watch an episode or two ago we talked about it. Every conceivable detail on it is perfect, which in this particular case, when you're talking about Tony who demands everything perfect unless he's decided it can go a different color or add a liberty to it, does need to be perfect. This car with all of the stuff on it came out gorgeous. The white stripe, the white top, the white interior for all the crap I gave him. It was a beautiful choice on the car. 440 automatic air conditioning. This is a stunning car. I am so excited now that they've landed to show this car to Cindy and get her reaction. The best part of my job, folks, the best part of my job. Hi, my name is Cindy D'Agostino. And I'm Tony D'Agostino, and this is our 1970 Dodge Challenger. My 1970 Dodge Challenger. Okay, your 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. All right. Cindy, are you excited? I am dying to see you. <laughs> dying, dying, dying. So the best part of our job is the finished car and the reveal. I know Cindy's going to love this. Willie! Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. I've said this before, and I'm going to stick with this. I'm not going to lie to the people at home. I do not like reveals. However, I do love Tony, and I love his wife, Cindy, very much. So I am excited to do this for her. Now, you wanted the B5 Blue. No. Just Yardner biscuits. <laughs> FC7, Plum Crazy, white interior. Come on, come on, can't wait okay, anymore. I can't take it anymore. All right. The moment before the cover comes off, there's a lot of excitement and anticipation in the air. But I'm excited because I like to watch their reaction to that top coming off. Okay, here we go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Come on up. Then we'll go to here and roll it back. <laughs> Gundar! Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Immediately, Cindy welled up and started crying. Well, when I first took the car cover off, I could not believe the beautiful purple color popping out left and right. Oh my gosh, the white stripe really stands out. I love the white stripe. In all honesty, the whole car, 100%, is beyond what I ever thought would be how it is now. It's, it's beautiful. 
you know, for the most part, reveals are emotional. And we've had some great ones in the past. The two reveals that come to my mind when I think about great epic reveals would be the one with Bill Goldberg where we duplicated the WWE entrance. And then when we unveiled the 1970 Hemi Charger at PK Ballpark over in Eugene. Those are the moments that will always stay with me. I can remember them like they were yesterday. This one, because they're dear friends of mine and because of how beautiful the car is, this one will last with me a lifetime too. Just look at that. Oh. No, that's nice. That's nice. I had seen some pictures of it along the way uh, with the car, but seeing it in person, face to face, is just, it's stunning. It was cool. You guys, you know, everybody here did a great job on the car. So happy to have it and drive it and use it and show it when we get home. What's, yeah, the, what's cool. the code for the longitudinal stripe, Tony? Gosh, beautiful. V something W. Oh, is V6 it? V6W. Oh, it is V6W. Yeah, you don't have to know the code. I don't have to know the code. Head. No. How about for a chrome outside racing mirror? It's a G code. It is. That's good enough, yeah. Like I say, I like giving Tony a hard time. He picks at me because I'll make a mistake on camera, which is really easy to do because you're kind of thinking about, oh, God, they're filming us. I got to say this. And then somebody will throw you a curveball and say, what's G33 code? Uh, and if you don't have it real quick, you might just say whatever. So when I throw him the codes like this for the mirror and the different parts, he's not necessarily remembering instantaneously. It gives him an opportunity to see what I go through. Pretty much almost everything on this car Absolutely is beautiful. Mopar NOS. And your husband yeah. provided... 90% of all that, by the it's way. It's absolutely gorgeous. Hey, it's gorgeous. That's why it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. isn't it? gorgeous, absolutely. This car has so many wonderful features, it's a blast to see Cindy learn all about her car now. <laughs> and a lot of detail and stuff, too, that I just... If oh, you could drive this Ford. car right now, would you drive this car? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> well, get some minutes. Can we look at the car a little bit first? Okay, looking at the car at a glance, Will, what's your favorite feature on this car? The white top and the white interior. White top, white interior. Yeah, the white stripe. Cut and Dougie? I like the color and the stripes and the top and the interior. Yeah. I like the button. Is that seat. comfortable or is that comfortable? It is so comfortable. It that, really was a, that was a Tony call, totally. He, I, I had a Cuda that had that back in the 90s and it was the most comfortable e-body I'd ever been in. Wow. And you've never had another one here with a bench no, seat like uh, that. And everybody here has said, wow, never had it's one. so comfortable. And it is, yeah. it's true. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Love it. What did you like most about it? If you had to pick one thing, Besides the color, because I know you're a plum crazy lady, plum crazy wife. By the way, that's her, that, that's her handle on that eBay, is plum crazy eBay. wife. I'm, I'm plum crazy wife on eBay, yeah, I am. I really am. I am plum crazy. So, uh, Glad to deal with. But, yeah. Now, this is the part I've been waiting for. I really love when Cindy and Tony were together on camera. I thought that was very endearing. They're like any married couple. They've been together forever. They both know how to let the other one win when it's time to let them win. Right, which Tony never lets me win. So, of course, we're not married either. So, besides the color, which I know is your favorite part, besides, what did you like? You know, the bench seat, I have to say, is really the best option. Comfortable? I think it's comfortable. My point is, when there is something, like Cindy calls the front seat an option, the bench seat. That was actually standard. Oh, Tony just lets it glide right over him like he's eating the best sandwich in the world. Yeah, give me more. Right? If that had been me, he'd have had my ass crucified. But that there is not an option, that there is standard. You can't say something to the sales option. It was not a sales option. I, you know this stuff, Mark. You know this stuff. It's like just beat you down to nothing. You know, be more like me, Tone. Build people up. Let them know it's okay. You're okay. Give this sign once in a while. You know what that sign is? That's equals, man. That means that you and me are equals. I guess it also means greater than. I don't know. Favorite feature? Uh, the white stripe with the purple and the 440. What's your favorite thing on the car? Man, it's hard to pick. Um, I guess, you know, I've had a lot of cars throughout the years and I've never really owned one that was plum crazy. It was a purple car. I've had a lot of different, and I, I mean, I know it's not a rare color. Matter of fact, it's the most common color on a 70 Challenger. And I said, but I never really had one, and I'm, I'm just happy to have, you know, an old purple car. You know, well, I'm happy to have two of them. Right, <laughs> there you go. I thought somebody might say the stance. The stance of this car is absolutely perfect. I like the wheels, too. Okay. Yeah, the Krager wheels are nice. Yeah, yeah the Krager's Krager are gorgeous, makes... absolutely. And I a... wasn't a fan when you first pointed them out. Right. The 16C wheel, the C stands for chrome, on these Krager wheels means that it's an all-aluminum rim, and it's been chrome-plated. I mean, that's a, that's a great finish, right? And that's going to last. Now, originally at Krager, like the SS wheels, the other ones that they've reproduced now, that has a cast aluminum center, but with a steel outer part on them. Those two flex and move 
differently. I haven't had one of the new ones fail, but back in the old days, if you go through the lot, you'll see a lot of failed Kragers where the chrome's peeling off the center section of them. This is a really neat design, the 610. I think it's, it's a neat, nostalgic look, and I think it's gonna prove to be a real durable wheel. Did Ben Franklin get hold of you? He has a key he wants you to work with, figure out what electricity is. Looks just like Ben Franklin with that hair. Have you seen that? In a previous episode of Graveyard Cars, we finished restoring our beautiful little dead wagon. This is an A100 pickup with a 426 Hemi. What year was it? 1964, 1965, 1966. If you think you remember or you just know, stay tuned after the break and I'll let you know how you did. All right, ghouls, welcome back. So the question is, what year is the little dead wagon? If you said 1964, ding, 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 you win. That is the correct answer. This is a 64 Dodge A100 pickup that we modified considerably. We put a Ray Barton 1000 horsepower on pump gas engine in it, a monster automatic 727 torque flight transmission, this truck is one of the most talked about cars from the 2018 SEMA show. What do you think? You want to take a look inside? Oh, I'd love to take a look inside. All yes. right. Open that bad boy up. Hopefully the door works. It, the yeah. door opens up. That's good. I love the bench seat. I love it. <sighs> yeah. And that was standard. Was that standard? Wow. I think it was a choice. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a choice. Wow. As much as you can imagine anything, you just, Seeing it in person is just it blows your mind because what it started out as and what it ends up as is you know two totally different things and in a good way. But no, it was a good car and I knew it was at the right place to have the right job done to it. And it was well worth the wait. Really? It shouldn't have been that long. Perfection takes time, baby. Wow. So you got your full rally instrumentation. Turn these on for you. Can you see the opera lighting? There you go. Yeah. I always thought that was such a cool feature on the rally dashes it's and the right. coming down from the <laughs> Yeah, how it's more of like an opera lighting. Yeah, that's nice. It really did come out beautiful. So if I take a little extra time to take bragging rights on the fact that the taillight bezels are re-chromed original ones and the taillight lenses are new old stock and how they look, how, how you should really take a moment because if, unless you had one set next to it, you might see the difference between them. Otherwise you wouldn't know. My job is to point those out to her. So I did take quite a bit of time walking around and showing her the different things and she was very attentive. Just air conditioning. Air conditioning. The air conditioning is probably my favorite thing because I've got to have air conditioning. Yes. Check out the steering wheel. I love it. Yeah. Love Isn't it. that I feel good? It. Absolutely. The reveal went good and it's because they're not just customers. You know, they're friends, they're family, they're part of our team. So this is about as original, about as original as car would get except the, the liberties you took for the colors. Sure. And it's funny because that's what everybody said that they liked was the, the, white top, the changes, the white, the white top, white, white stripe, the bed yeah. seat. And, you know, Mark takes a shot, Tony takes a shot. But after like the fifth and sixth shot, I kind of treat them like my kids. I just block them out. Have you noticed how this is supposed to be about you, but here he is, right? It's I just want you to know this is your car and we did it for you. I know you did, okay. thank you so and much. We love you. And you guys go out front, we'll uh, meet okay. you around there. Cindy was so excited to drive her car, it was great to see. And we're going for a road test. Why, why, why? How did you go the whole life without being in front of a camera? I don't know. It's kind <laughs> yeah, of natural it, it, for me. Because <laughs> it it I'm enough. sick. I don't know. So what do you think? How's the car drive? I think it's great. Step on it. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Woo! Boy, that feels pretty good. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. This is so fun when Cindy says, stomp it, stomp it, or step on it, and Tony just drops a hammer. That is great. That is what this is all about. It's all about, let's go back and be teenagers again and say to heck with everything, we're just going to have some fun. That's all we're trying to do here. Makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> 
nice. Yeah, nice. it rides nice, it steers nice. I love nice. this fast ratio steering in the car. Watching them drive this car, you know they loved it. Tony knows his stuff, so it's interesting to listen to what he's paying attention to. You know, the gauges are beautiful. Instrument specialties did a nice job on them, and you hate to say something better than new, but they are, because the way how they're calibrated with modern technology, it's better than they were in 1970, even though they look like 1970. Right. This is great for me, watching Tony and Cindy driving the car around. I know we did a good job on it, but still, you get a little nervous when like the real Mopar guru gets behind the wheel of a car and he's had the biggest and the best of everything to get in that car and go out and take it for a drive and put it through its paces. That's one thing, he's not easy on things. You'll see when he's driving it, he's going through the gears, rowing through them manually, he's got his foot to the wood. He's driving this car, so it needs to be right. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh my God, I can't wait to drive this thing. <laughs> You're next. Get out of the seat. <laughs> So since you're gonna have this car also, and I know you don't baby your other Challenger when you drive it, how are you gonna drive this one? Same way. So you're gonna be doing burnouts and speeding? Absolutely. <laughs> but that's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way it sounds, I love the way it rides, feels, you know? Yeah. Brakes a little funky, so step on them now. Oh my God, this is so fun. Oh my God, this is so fun. What happened? Don't let me get used to it at first. Uh, no. Slow down. Please. My favorite part, Cindy gets behind the wheel, Tony's in the passenger seat. Look at the look on his face, he's scared. He shrinks down like a little kid in the passenger seat. He's breathing through his mouth, he's panicked. He's scared, slow it down and play it in slow motion. And I believe you can see the lips saying, oh my God, no. <laughs> Come on, man. It's a car. You don't see me reacting like that. You see the footage of me driving around. I don't care if I'm in the back seat, the front seat, the trunk on the roof. I don't care. I'm ice cold. That's why the world calls me the ice man. Then later it became the ice tray. And it's been other things too. It's really anything to do with a cool substance known as ice. How do you like it? I love it. Let's get another one. <laughs> So as a car builder, there's really no better reward than to see people enjoy their car. If they get emotional, if they spend time walking around it and talking about it. So it's, it's a great time for me as a builder, as you know, a self-employed person, to know that what I'm doing makes a difference. It's also equally good to know that I'm making some, some burners. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm hungry. <laughs> like that little house of horrors. Feed me. <laughs> yeah, it rumbles. Ready? Yeah. This is why we do what we do. It's awesome. <laughs> oh my God, that train was That was top. cool. It's my dream come true. Thank you guys so much. Thanks to all the bulls for working on the car and making it perfect. They did a good job. Yes, they did. Cindy has a 2010 RT Classic Plum Crazy Challenger. Yeah, so now we'll have two Challengers that are very similar. Uh, so how do you think they're gonna be together? Oh, perfect. Just like us, baby. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs>